Good afternoon guys. Um, today we're having a look at combining geometric growth and decay and what this basically is, is we take the previous recurrence relations for geometric growth and decay and we adjust it for every period. So the examples that we can use for this are that in an interest, so on a loan interest is made on it or if you take out a loan interest is applied to it, the loan gets greater. But because you're required to make payments, then there's a reduction in the loan as well. So we're taking into account that reduction. Another example might be animal populations. You might have kangaroo populations, for example. These kangaroo populations in certain areas of Victoria might have uh, might grow out of control, and regular culling of these reduces those numbers. So we'd look at the exponential growth of these animal numbers, and then what is done to that as a means of keeping them under control. So you can see here, we've got the pretty similar rules um, for the recurrence relation. We've got V0 as your starting value, just here, and then Vn plus 1, so every new term is the rate of growth or decay, which we've seen before, times by the previous term, so that should be familiar based on our previous geometric growth and decay. And then we are either adding or subtracting our adjustment for every period. All right, so that is the basis of this whole piece. So we'll move into an example, just as a means, because we should be okay with applying this. So we're gonna have an example where if trout numbers grow, so if we have trout numbers that are growing at a rate of trout numbers grow at 10% per month we'll make it and the initial population, so V0 is equal to 10,000 trout and every month, every month we take 3,000 out of that population. Then what does the relation look like? So what does the recurrence relation look like? What are the months after that and how do we find that look like? And also, when will the stocks be empty? So we want to be able to answer all those questions um, with that information. So to write the relation, first off, we've got our starting value, so V0. V0 is equal to 10,000. And... Our recurrent relation with that. So you take a look at the top again. So the rate, so we find our R by adding the percentage increase to 1, all used in decimals. So R is going to be 1.1. 1 .1. Our VN is whatever the first term is. So we can leave it as VN, sorry, not the first term, whatever the previous term is. We'll use 10,000 for our first one. And then plus or minus the adjustment, so we're taking away fish, so we'd have take 3,000 every month. Now to find the first two months numbers, we use our CAS calculator or any calculator to do it, so we want to hit punch in our first term, so 10,000 is our starting point. On our CAS we'll have an execute button Hit that, and then next up is to apply our relation to it. So we want to times by 1.1, that'll multiply our last answer, which was 10,000. Take away 3,000, 3, sorry. And our first month, we'll have... 8,000 trout left, okay. then 
hit XE again. Second month, we're going to have 5,800. Now, when will stocks be empty? If we keep hitting XE, what we're looking for is the first month where stocks dip to zero or below zero. And you'll see that after five months, our stocks hit a value of negative 2,210.0. Okay. So after five months, we won't have any trout left in our wherever it is, fish farm, lake, river. Not much of a fisherman, so if I was there, I don't know how we'd get rid of 3,000 fish. Okay, so that in a nutshell is combining geometric growth and decay. So we key takeaways are we're using a pretty similar thing to what we've done with geometric growth and decay, and we're just having a little addition or subtraction um, to adjust at each period. Okay, hope that helps. Um, once you've watched it, comment on anything you like, don't like, and share it if you know anyone else who might find it handy. Cheers, guys.